Hi, it's Dr. Kelleher again. We had some questions submitted uh, after our last talk uh, concerning pets and poisons. And so I just wanted to take a minute to address those. Uh, one person wrote that they saw a Jackson Galaxy post that lilies are poisonous to cats, which they definitely are. What can I do to keep my outdoor cats from eating them? Most of the time, outdoor cats will avoid lilies. It's mostly our indoor cats that get bored. However, if you plant cat grass near your lilies, they will definitely prefer to chew on those as opposed to your lilies. So the best way to keep your outdoor cats safe from poisonous outdoor plants is to plant, plant plants that are safe for them to eat. Other question we got is, I'm curious as to what household plants are poisonous to dogs or cats. So um, the probably the most common examples I can come up with are lilies for cats, poinsettias for both dogs and cats. Um, spider plants are typically okay if they did want to chew on those. Uh, Christmas cactuses are fairly poisonous and other succulents are not good for dogs and cats to chew on. If you have a specific plant you have a question on, that'd probably be a better route to go as to how to best advise you as to whether or not that plant will be poisonous. Um, most decorative plants are poisonous if eaten. So as a general rule of thumb, if it looks really pretty, it's probably poisonous. Um, and then we had another question. What outside plants, flowers in particular, are poisonous to dogs besides poison ivy? So again, a lot of your decorative plants and bushes and flowers are the ones that are poisonous. And um, typically things with waxy leaves, you can use that as a sign as to how you could determine if it's poisonous, but there's several bushes, uh, several different flowers. Most pets will leave them alone. Cats do, or cats and dogs do enjoy cat grass. If you wanted to plant that around to try to encourage them to chew on that as opposed to your decorative plants. Um, but I'll answer this as a general rule of thumb that usually the prettier, more decorative it is, the more likely it is to be poisonous. If you have a specific question about a plant or shrub, definitely give us a call. What's the best stuff to use to keep a pug from itching? So probably the best thing to keep a pug from itching is to figure out why he's itching and try to eliminate that cause. Most common reason for itching is fleas and ticks, so we definitely recommend a very good uh, fast kill flea tick preventative. Uh, beyond that, you're going to be looking at seasonal allergies or potentially some other contact allergen. So that would involve potentially medication, frequent bathing with a general shampoo, uh, adding oils to the diet, or things like that to keep the skin from drying out. So lots of different reasons. For that particular pug, I would recommend an exam so we could help determine why is he itching in the first place and help you come up with an individualistic plan as to keep him from itching. And then our last questions that we had submitted, with ticks already being so bad, what's the best flea and tick prevention to get from the store for dogs and cats? So um, probably the best over-the-counter flea and tick that you can purchase are going to be the Soresto collars. They do come with their own issues. You do need to make sure they are very tight. They need to actually touch the skin or they will not be effective. Uh, we've had some bad luck with them being used on cats here in the clinic because they do tend to loosen with times. Cats tend to exhibit a lot of grooming behavior and we have had some collars get stuck in mouths and cause chemical burns. The other problem that we've had with them is that we don't really know exactly how long they last. I can tell you they don't last the full eight months that they're labeled for, but the exact length of time that they're going to last is going to vary on your individual dog and their lifestyle because uh, depending on what they like to do, they will run through the reservoir of par parasiticide in the collar faster than the ideal eight months that it could possibly last. Um, so we do recommend the prescription oral products just because they are easy to predict. They're very effective and they're very safe. However, if you need to grab something over the counter, that's probably your best bet. Just make sure that it is tight enough and that you do swap it out on a very, very regular basis, preferably before you find a tick attached to your dog. So 
um, that are the questions we had submitted. I hope that helps to clear things up and answer some questions that you all had. And I hope you have a great night.